Verse number 15, the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verse number 15. Amen. So because of the high, uh, the um, five-hour energy, I'm not responsible for anything that I'll say um, in these next few minutes. Okay, so. Exodus chapter 17. Maybe look at verse number 15. As we continue in our series, He's All That. Turn to somebody and tell him He's All That. Now turn to somebody else like you mean it and tell him He's All That. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. And I want to speak to you this morning on the subject, Jehovah Nissi, the Lord, our banner. The Lord, our banner. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. We thank you that we are in your army, fighting for your name and your cause. But we thank you that you've not left us by ourselves. You are our banner this morning. So as we raise your name and your banner this morning, we pray for a fresh anointing. I pray that a warrior spirit will be released all over this house. That somebody would decide today that they're going to stand up in your name and be victorious. We thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. Turn to your neighbor, tell them it's time to fight. One of the most dramatic and endearing scenes of our nation's history was captured in 1945 by Joe Rosenthal, who was working as a photographer for the Associated Press. This Pulitzer Prize winning photo was taken during the bloody battle for Iwo Jima, Japan. As the 3rd Platoon East Company 2nd Battalion 28th Regiment of the 5th Division of the U.S. Marines fought to take the crest of Mount Sarabachi. This mountain was the island's highest peak and its most strategic position. And the U.S. military command was seeking to gain control of the island of Iwo Jima so they could begin an aerial campaign against the Japanese home islands and Iwo Jima was to be the best, the base pardon for fighter aircraft and emergency landing site for bombers. On February 14, 1945, after three days of heavy naval and, a, and an aerial bombardment, the first wave of United States Marines stormed into Iwo Jima's shores. During the next few days, the Marines advanced inch by inch under heavy fire from Japanese artillery and suffered suicidal charges from the Japanese military. While Japanese kamikaze flyers, they slammed into the Allied naval fleet around Iwo Jima. The Marines on the island, in spite of the opposition, continued their bloody advance across the island, displaying remarkable endurance. On February 23rd, the crest of the 550 foot mountain was taken and the next days the slopes of the extinct volcano were secured. By March 3rd U.S. forces controlled all three air airfields on the island and on March 26th the last Japanese defenders of Iwo Jima were wiped out. More than 6,000 Americans died taking Iwo Jima and some 17,000 were injured. And at approximately 12 a.m., the flag was hoisted on a steel pipe above the island. The sight of the small American flag flying the top of this mountain thrilled the men all over the island. Because for the first time during World War II, an American flag was flying above what was considered to be Japanese-controlled territory. And when the people looked up and saw this symbol of victory, and encouraged the wounded, the tired, and the battered army defenders to continue fighting for their country. You see, 
see, there's something awesome and inspiring about living and even fighting under a powerful bed. In the case of our previous story this morning, that banner was known as the Star Spangled Banner that represents the United States of America. But for we who are the people of God this morning, we are engaged not in a physical battle, but in spiritual warfare in the army of the Lord. And as great as the United States flag is, we need to understand that we are fighting under a greater and even more powerful banner. And that is the banner of Jehovah Nissi. Jehovah Nissi means simply the Lord, my banner. And this name stresses that God is our rallying point. Turn to your neighbor and tell him it's all about God. That's right. We rally around his name. We labor around his name. We war around his name. Amen. And that's what that name, Jehovah Nissi, is all about. It means that God is our rallying point. It means that he is our means of victory. He is the one who is able and ready to fight for his people. Glory to God. Amen. It means that he is able again to fight for his people. He is Jehovah. And of course we know that that name is a covenant name. We also know that that name means a self-existent one. While the name Nissi, it means to be conspicuous as a flag. It means a standard or a signal or a sign. The prime root of this word means to glean from afar. And it carries the connotations or the idea of someone holding up a pole with a glistening object on the top of it that is the symbol of those who fall under it and are able to see it. So therefore the combined definition means the self-existent one who reveals himself as our banner during a time of warfare. And whether we realize it or not, we need to understand that this Christian walk is indeed a war. Amen. While you're sitting here in church looking cute and important, the devil is in the background. Amen. Preparing for his next assault upon you. Amen. So while, it is, while we are blessed and while we are anointed and while it is wonderful to be in church and to be a Christian and while there are some attributes about us that do not signify or make one think about war, we need to understand that we are in a war. Turn your neighbor and tell them there's a war going on. That's right. And it is because of that that God wants us to understand that he is a warrior God. Amen. I know he's sweet Jesus. I know he's gentle Jesus. I know he's loving Jesus. I know he's kind Jesus. But you need to understand that there's another part of God that you don't want to mess with. Are y'all hearing me? Oh, that's right. Amen. If you are playing games with him, if you are cursing his name, if you have decided to go up against him, I come by to tell you, you got the wrong one, baby. Glory to God. Because our God is an awesome God. He's a loving He encourages each and every one of us to come under his banner where we find protection. Now the first time that this name of God is used is here in our text in Exodus chapter 17 verses 8 to 15. Israel will now finds themselves about to face another test in their journey. You see about six weeks after being redeemed by the blood in Egypt and redeemed by power at the Red Sea. The children of Israel now come to a place called Rephidim. The name Rephidim actually means a resting place. And no doubt, because of the meaning of this name, they were excited about coming to a resting place. But as far as resting places are concerned, this place would actually be a major disappointment. You see, just like last week when we talked about in chapter 15, when they got to Rephidim, they find a familiar situation developing. 
For the Bible says, once again, they find themselves without water. Somebody say water. Now, based upon what we looked at just last week, you would have thought that the children of Israel might have learned their lesson. You would have thought that they would have looked back and said, you know, just a couple of weeks ago we were in this situation and God provided water for us in the wilderness. But that's not what happened. We find the children of Israel arriving at this place and once again they opened up their mouths and began to complain. It was so dry and hot again that they were afraid of dying of dehydration. So the Bible says in verse number 2 of that chapter that they quarreled against Moses as well as against God. 